What's going on people, welcome back, and today we are going to be looking at some unhealthy things. There's this place called Heart Attack Grill. You may have heard of it before. Well, that thing still exists. And unfortunately, they're still very, very disgusting. We're going to be looking at Heart Attack Grill. Let's do this. <laughs> Alrighty, well, uh, this is going to be horrible. At most restaurants, having three customers suffer heart attacks after eating at the establishment would be a source of great concern and shame, something to be minimized and explained away. But not at one spot, where they actually promote how unhealthy it is, offering free meals to its most obese patrons, and even celebrating a death on the premises. It's aptly named the Heart Attack Grill. We sent ABC's Ryan Owens to check out their new digs in none other than Sin City. In a country where calories are posted like warnings on restaurant menus, where unhealthy school lunches are under fire, and where our first lady has a vegetable garden, there is an alternative reality. And it looks like this. Food. This monument to greasy gluttony. Almost there. Almost done with this uh, single <laughs> bypass. Is called the Heart Attack Grill. Okay, I'm just going to say something real quick. It looks like everyone there, all the customers, are fat people. Nice. It's a defiant throwback to a pre health obsessed America. Hello. A kind of hospital themed Hooters, located where else? Sin City. But as you're about to find out, eater beware. This restaurant can literally be hazardous to your heart. Remarkably, the owner says it's all done in the name of promoting good health. One among us has to tell the truth, and that's what we're doing here. The Heart Attack Grill prides itself on pushing limits, along with belt sizes. Diners must wear hospital gowns, people 350 pounds plus eat free no wonder there's so many fat asses in there they um well <laughs> if you're 350 pounds over you eat free <sighs> god their flatliner fries cooked in lard are unlimited Thirsty? Try the all butterfat shake. Or maybe a shot of vodka served in a prescription pill bottle. And new to this menu, a burger with eight patties, almost 20,000 calories. That's the equivalent of nearly 40 Big Macs. 40 Big Macs. A, how much is that damn thing? B, why the hell would you ever need something that is like the same as 40 Big Macs. That's disgusting. That's la la. I'm getting fat from looking at it. Oh, and if you don't finish your meal, you get spanked by a nurse. She's not exactly a real RN, but her spankings are real, real hard. The restaurant and all of its repulsive excess seems right at home among the tourist traps in downtown Las Vegas. Its owner, perhaps the ultimate Vegas showman, Are you gonna finish your burger next time? Yeah, I'll try. Is John Basso. As part of his act, he likes to be called Dr. John. Now breathe in for me. Dr. John has become something of a superstar in the fast food world. In his trademark over the top way, he depicts himself as Jesus Christ at the Last Supper. You can see Chuck E. Cheese, the peak is basically you could just see everyone the there, Wendy's, other McDonald's. Yeah, He's certainly come a long way since I first met him almost three years ago at his right. first heart attack grill outside Phoenix, Arizona. Yeesh. Back then, the restaurant was under fire after its nearly 600 pound spokesman, Blair Rivers, died of obesity related issues. He was just 29. This guy was only 29 and he died from being too... Uh, uh, 
why why just why would you ever even eat there and why would you eat it so many times that you're gonna die there's an argument to be made that you use this guy during his life and that now you are very morbidly using his death to continue to promote your restaurant I absolutely agree and in a very sick way his death has gotten the message out further so this man's death has not given you pause at all zero pause you guys we are actually rolling now actually rolling dr john's vegas location is double the size of his old place in arizona and his in-house fatality rate it hasn't slowed a bit how many people have actually had heart attacks in the room that we're sitting in in the room that we're sitting in we've had three heart attacks and how many people have died one now i would like to say that the other two I did the grandest of favors for because they now uniquely and in a very real way understand their own genetic shortcomings. Now the one that I couldn't save was a very dear friend of mine. And I want to tell you something. They'll say it's grotesque. They'll yes, say how, they will. That's how can you keep the man's cremation here? And you sick frick, you put that dead man's ashes on a table. A, isn't that kind of like a health violation? B, that's just disrespectful. I mean, the guy did not sign up to be, do that. And I'll tell you something. I am setting the bag on the table. And I challenge any other restaurant to set the bag on the table. I'm talking about a bag of truth, about what's not going to happen if you don't listen to me. This will happen. This was a good man with hopes and dreams who couldn't control his eating habits. Inside this bag are the remains of yet another spokesman, John Ailman. He ate at the restaurant every day. But people are actually dying. So that's kind of where the, the gig has to stop. What do you say? People are dying. People will continue to die. Can they just stop, pause, and reflect upon the food for thought that I'm selling? It's not hamburgers, it's not t-shirts, it's not french fries. I'm selling you food for thought and a good laugh. Let's all have a good time, but let's really digest this. Let's think a bit, or we're gonna end up exactly like my friend in the bag. Until then, Dr. John is the first to admit heart attacks are part of his business model. When there are lights and sirens outside and they're bringing some person out on a gurney, you're basically in the back room counting money at that point. Absolutely. Was that heart attack good for business? Did that heart attack pad my wallet with money? Absolutely. Did I enjoy that? Absolutely. I'm a businessman first and foremost. Let's be clear about something. I'm not peddling hamburgers to small children without parental guidance. These are adults purchasing a legal substance from me. I want one and only one thing. I want my message out there loud and clear. I am a If you want that message out there, don't. I mean, technically he isn't wrong. He's selling legal substances to people and that's what they do. God. Leave her that when people hear my message, the net health benefit to society is incredibly good. It's true that before he served up artery clogging, gut churning meals, he ran fitness clubs and diet centers. But real nutritionists aren't that. buying a word out of this fake doctor's mouth. It sounds to me like he's appealing to very base instincts um, and certainly playing into people's enormous resentment about being told what to eat. If he's making a living and making money doing this, obviously there are people who really respond to this and he's marketing to them. Here's the thing. Our restaurant serves bad for your food. Other restaurants serve bad for your food. We're honest, they're not. Plain and simple, yeah. if oh. everybody collectively got together and told the world all restaurant food is bad for you, then maybe we would save a few lives because I don't want to see people dead. Now, if they do die here, I'm not going to lie to you. That's great for business. I'll say it again. Death is great for business at the Heart Attack Grill. Somehow in the three years since we first met, Dr. John has found a way to be even more exploitive. 
He recently hired a very short nurse who speeds around in a mini ambulance delivering beers. Come to Hag, has its perks. And Mike's my hero. He also found a new spokesman for the restaurant. 460 pound Mike Lee just suffered his first heart attack, but he's still alive and shilling. How are you doing on the program, Mike? Great. And while people keep dying, the heart attack grill keeps thriving. We've both doubled in terms of money, in terms of square footage, but we've exponentially grown when you want to talk about extending the message. Dr. John hopes to continue to grow and expand his morbid message to an even bigger audience, perhaps in a city near you. You're fine, son. Keep eating. I'm Ryan Owens for Nightline in Las Vegas. Oh, that's that's just sick. That's just absolutely sick. I mean, I get I, I, I get his point, but that's just wrong and sick and morbid and blah, blah, blah. I can't do that. Nope, nope, nope. Anyway, guys, this is going to conclude for today. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel because I upload every single day. Don't want to miss that. So I can see you guys in another video. Peace out.